Okay, in this tutorial, we're looking at vector proofs using the Scalar product. Okay, so um, as we've experienced already in our studies, the, our proof questions can be quite tricky. Um, these are no exceptions for these ones. They can be a bit hard to keep your head around at times, but uh, outside of maybe a question on the sack, you won't get proof questions like these on exams at all. So um, you need to get your head around them for those um, proof type questions on SAC, but otherwise don't stress too much about them. So to start off with, we're just going over and defining some different shapes okay, and their properties. So a quadrilateral is a plain four-sided figure with no two sides necessarily parallel nor equal in length. So it looks something like that. For our trapeziums, we've got a plain four-sided shape with one pair of sides parallel but not equal. So we see our trapezium there. And for trapeziums, um, for the trapezium ABCD, since A and B so AB is parallel to DC, then uh, vector AB is equal to lambda DC. So it's just uh, some constant uh, or scalar value lambda okay, that, multiply, that you multiply DC by to get AB. So nothing too crazy there. Okay, for a parallelogram, a four-sided shape with two sets of parallel sides equal in length. Okay, so you see our parallelogram here. So that means that vector AB is going to equal DC and that vector AD is going to equal vector BC. For rectangles, so a rectangle is a parallelogram with all angles 90 degrees. So that means again that AB equals DC and AD equals BC. But because we're angles are 90 degrees, we can also say that AB dot BC is going to be zero because they're parallel, uh, perpendicular. Uh, BC uh, dot CD is also going to equal zero. Uh, CD dot DA is going to equal zero, and DA dot AB is going to equal zero. Basically, because they're all at, uh, perpendicular to each other. A rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides equal. Okay, so we're saying that AB and BC. So AB equals uh, DC. So AB equals DC. Sorry, AD equals BC, and all their magnitudes are the same. So um, Magnitude AB is going to be the same as the magnitude of BC, which is the same as the magnitude of CD and um, AD. Right, so I'll keep moving. So a square, so a square is a rhombus with all angles 90 degrees. So all our sides are equal and they're all equal, uh, all perpendicular. So AB equals DC, AD equals BC. AB dot BC is going to equal zero, BC dot CD equals zero, CD dot DA equals zero, and DA dot AB equals zero. So that's basically each pair of our sides that have a corner in common are perpendicular to each other, so the dot product is going to equal zero. And as you can see, all our magnitudes of our side lengths are the same as well. Uh, for triangles, so a median of a triangle is a line segment from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So for example here, Okay, this would be a median, this would be a median, and this would be a median. Okay, the centroid of a triangle is a point of intersection of the three medians. Okay, so where they all intersect, it's called the centroid. Okay, in this example, it's labeled G. So G is the centroid of a triangle ABC, and O is the origin. So our origin could be anywhere. Our origin could be over here, could be over here, could be over here. It's, the origin isn't one of our corners necessarily. Okay, then the distance from the origin to G is equal to a third of the distance from the origin to A, okay, plus O to B plus O to C. Okay, so our origin could be anywhere, and that uh, little formula will hold. Okay, so using vectors to prove geometric, uh, geometrical theorems. Okay, so here's a few things that we've learnt uh, along the way that can be quite helpful for our uh, geometric proofs. So if O is the origin and A and B are points, the midpoint M of the line segment AB, okay, so if we've got, we did this one a while ago, so this is A, this is B, this is M, okay, and we've got the origin, say, so over here. Okay, then we can say OM, and so that would be the origin here, OM is equal to OA plus AN, uh, OM is equal to OA plus half AB, OM is equal to OA plus a half of OB take OA, and OM is equal to a half of OA plus OB. Okay, if two vectors A and B 
uh, yeah, AB and CD are parallel, then AB is a multiple of CD, so lambda is just a scalar. If two vectors A, B and C, D are perpendicular, then the dot product of those two vectors will equal zero. If two vectors uh, A, B and C, D are equal, then A, B is parallel to C, D, and the magnitude of A, B equals C, D. Okay, that should make sense because they're exactly the same vector. If A, B is a multiple of B, C, then the points A, B and C are collinear. So that's, that is a line, a straight line. So all of these things we've seen at various points so far in this chapter. Okay, so we'll have a look at we're at example 18, which is the only one that we've got to look at. Okay, so we're going to prove that if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Okay, so let's just draw a little picture for ourselves. Okay, so we've got our parallelogram O, A, B, and C. Okay, we know we're going to call O, A, a, and we're going to call O, C, C, and then we've got our diagonals here, and we're going to say that these meet at right angles. Okay, because O, A, B, C is a parallelogram, okay, well we can say that um, A is equal to our O, A, which is equal to our C, B as well. Okay, and we can say that C is equal to OC, which is also equal to AB. So just setting up some definitions here. Okay, um, so we're going to find a vector expression for the diagonal OB in terms of AC. So and say that OB is equal to OA plus AB, okay, which is uh, the same as OA plus AB. OC, okay, which is equal to A plus C. That's our diagonal there, is equal to A plus C. Okay, if we look at our diagonal from A to C, so we say AC is equal to AO plus OC, which is equal to OC minus OA, which is equal to our C minus our A. That's this diagonal, okay, from A to C. Okay, so the dot product of the diagonals is zero. So we know that uh, OB, sorry, OB dot AC, okay, uh, which is equal to our A plus C dot C take A, we know that's going to equal zero. Okay, so what we do is we can expand our brackets up here and say, well, we've got, we're going to get A, right, O, B, dot A, C. Well, we're going to get our A dot A, and get an A dot A, and we're going to get a C dot A, and we're going to get a minus a dot C and a C dot C, looks like C dot C. Okay, we know then, well, they're, they're equivalent to each other. C dot A is going to be the same as A dot C, they're, they're, they're going to cancel out. And A dot A, well, that's the magnitude of A squared. And C dot C is the magnitude of C squared. Okay, and again, we know that that has to equal zero. Okay, and so since OB dot AC okay, equals zero, okay, then magnitude of A squared equals the magnitude of C, sorry, C squared. Okay, so the magnitude of OA equals the magnitude of OC. Okay, the length of OA is equal in length to OC, okay, therefore OABC is a rhombus. Okay, it is a rhombus. So, um, the, as I said at the start of the tutorial, our vector proofs can be quite tricky. Okay, see how you go um, and just do the best you can on these questions, really.